Hello and welcome to the first of many Patreon videos. I've been meaning to put some of these together for you guys. Uh, I've been a little busy with, of course, uh, school, study, mechanical engineering. And uh, I thought that, you know, what would be more appropriate than Eternal Masters happening than to kick off uh, beginnings of a video series that's just for you guys that do the Patreon. Uh, maybe someday I'll put this up on YouTube as well. but. For now, I, I want this to just be something exclusive for you guys for supporting me. Thank you so much for doing so. Um, and I hope that you guys enjoy uh, this content, and I hope that you guys enjoy the uh, playlist. I have updated the playlist. There is more songs on there than there was last time you may have checked. So check it out. Anyways, let's break into this. So obviously, as you can see, Eternal Masters is here. Let's get right into it. So... Um, what Wizards is trying to do, I think, is great. Uh, there are a lot of things that I like about what I've seen from Eternal Masters so far. We're going to get into the spoilers, so that'll be fun. Uh, yeah, basically, uh, it's going to be a 249 card set, so nearly 250 cards. Uh, it's not coming out until June 10th, uh, but that's not that far away. Today's the 25th when I'm shooting this, so just a couple of weeks, really. Um, now, it's not coming until Magic Online until the 17th, and that kind of bothers me. Uh, and everything for Magic Online always is a little bit behind. Um, we're, we're always just a little bit behind, you know? And, uh, and that's okay. You know, I, I think that, um, I think that's alright. I'll get over it. Uh, it is $10 for one booster of Eternal Masters, as you can see to my left. Um, and, you know, we all knew it was going to be expensive. I mean, they're reprinting Force, we're getting Jace, some other very powerful cards being reprinted, which is good. Reprintings are important. Reprintings allow players who aren't in Legacy because of the price tag associated with it to play. And I think that's a great thing. I mean, obviously, I'm going to lose some value on my Legacy deck. Um, but you know what? That is a small price to pay. Other players being able to play the format is great. New players, new decks maybe. Who knows? You know, uh, I'm looking forward to it. I really am. I hope more people play Legacy than they do now. Uh, Legacy, of course, since some changes that have happened in coverage and entities that used to do a lot more Legacy, I'm not going to name names, aren't doing as much Legacy because it's not being as supported as Standard and Modern. And, of course, the li various limited formats. Uh, Sealed, for example, limited. Um... But this is a good thing. This is a really good thing for, for Eternal. You guys know that I'm, I'm very huge into Legacy. Um, and uh, the digital price is different if you look down below. $6.99 for digital. Uh, why the price difference? Well, that makes sense. I mean, paper is always probably going to be more expensive uh, than Magic Online. That's just how that's going to be. That just makes sense. You know, paper is more about collectibles. You get to keep the cards, you know. Online, it's just it's just data. It's just little digital pieces. But let's keep rolling. So, what you guys have actually been waiting for, probably, the spoiler. So, uh, I, this is just something I put together. Uh, just this slideshow behind me, just so I can have something to, you know, point to and talk about. Ah, uh, this was just kind of a splash of all the different ca cards that are coming out. Just a splash, not everything, but some of them. Uh, World Gorger Dragon is here. That was weird. I don't know why they decided to make that part of the set. Obviously, there's an unlimited loop that you can do in Legacy with World Gorger Dragon. Uh, that involves, uh, typically speaking, it's it's um, done with either um, Animate Dead, or you can do it with uh, Necro... There's like a three-mana reanimate. It has to be like a permanent. You can't just reanimate the dragon. You need some sort of reanimation enchantment, typically, that attaches to the dragon, and then you get this loop, because if you read dragon, uh, whenever he enters the battlefield, we exile all of the permanents we control. So if the thing that you exiled is like an animate dead, or something else, uh, not necromancy, it might be necromancy, is what I'm thinking of. Yeah, necromancy. Uh, you get to have this infinite loop with the dragon, and because you're removing all your permanents, and then all your permanents are coming back, it's an infinite mana combo. Uh, something you could do is you could run, I've seen some players, and I actually tried this myself, Punishing Fire and Grove of, the, Grove of the Burn Willows because if you're exiling the Grove and returning the Grove, as long as you had another red source and another source, so if you had three mana, a, preferably like a black source, obviously, because of your mana base. So like a, a mana source, Grove, and then a red source, 
you should be able to just keep punishing fire of your opponent every time that it does the loop. Now here's the thing. At least on Magic Online, my understanding of this in paper might be different. You need a way to break the loop. Um, or your opponent has to die within the loop. Uh, my preference is you kill your opponent during the loop, and then therefore the loop would stop because the game is over, your opponent is dead. Um, there's a reason this card was banned, World Gorgeous Dragon, uh, for a time. Because of these infinite loops that Wizards didn't want happening in these formats. Uh, but now that there's a lot of other st stronger things you'd be doing in Legacy, World Gorgeous Dragon is back. So if you're looking for a really budget and fun deck to brew around, that's a great option. Obviously, Grove of the Burn, Burn Willows is not Groves of the Burn Willows is not very cheap. Maybe that's going to be something that we're going to see as a reprint. But yeah, this is just a splash page, and obviously we've got Jason Force. But let's break into some of the other cards you might not know that are being reprinted. Dak Faden's back. One of my favorite Planeswalkers. Uh, obviously, most of the play that he sees is vintage. Dak Faden, of course, you know. Thief of the Multiverse. I actually keep a couple special Dak Faden cards in my collection. Uh, one of them that I never let go of being the Dak Faden Electrolyze. Now, um, if you guys never read the comic books, you might not know all that much about Dak. I'm not really going to go into his backstory here. But if you want to read it, uh, those comic books are not too terribly expensive, I think. But they're interesting reads. And uh, they're by IDW Comics. And uh, they do a pretty good job. Um, those guys have done many other various comic book series outside of Magic as well. Uh, and obviously, Jace. Jace, the mind sculptor himself. And it's good that we're getting a reprint of Jace. Uh, I actually, every time that I played Jace myself in Legacy, I had like an Esper Parfait control at one point that I was building with some friends' help. I had to borrow my Jaces. So if I'm going to be trying to get a hold of this set in paper, uh, the cool thing is, is I might be able to get my hands on a Jace. Or maybe I won't. Maybe I'll have to trade for it, but that's okay. That's part of what's interesting about Eternal Masters is we're going to be able to get into these very powerful spells. Both of these Planeswalkers pitchable to both Force of Will and Misdirection. We'll get to that, though. Why are those cards so important, especially Force in, in Legacy? Let's get there, though, first. So, yes, Jace is back. Dak, back. They're back, guys. They're back. Now, granted, they're both... Hang on a second, though. Before we move on, they are both being printed at Mythic Rare. Uh, that makes sense. We may see more sets of Dak coming out. Uh, this might be one of the last times in recent time that we're going to see a reprint of Jace. The last time, I believe, was... Um, oh, goodness me. <sighs> it was the last time they tried to reprint a bunch of Eternal stuff, but it wasn't called Eternal Masters. I'll think of it in a second. But, uh, you know, there was, like, Vintage Masters on Magic Online. It's the other one I remember off the top of my head. But yes, Jace has seen some reprints outside of, you know, his first printing in Worldwick. Uh, and it's good that we're seeing him again. He's a very powerful walker. He's a very popular walker. For good reason. All of his modes are very powerful. Whether you're Fate Sealing with the plus ability, whether you're Zeroing with the Brainstorm ability, Jace is powerful. You could even use his minus abilities and they're strong. The Return a Creature. Uh, the Exile all of their cards. Leave them with a library that was just what their hand was. Very powerful walker. Now, Dak Faden's power stems from when he's used in Vintage. Why is he so powerful? His minus ability. Uh, gain control of an artifact. Why is that so strong? In Vintage, there is a lot of powerful artifacts from Time Vault to all the fast mana. Your Moxins, um, <clears throat> to name a few. Like your Mana Crypts, your Soul Rings even. Vintage has power. Power meaning the Power Nine. And so Dak Faden fits really well into Vintage, not only because he's like Jace, he's a blue walker, he's easier to get onto the table more quickly. Using some Mox and Mana, uh, it's not that bad that he's both red and blue mana. Uh, just a simple, either having a Mox uh, Sapphire or Mox Ruby, you can get Dak onto the table very quickly. Maybe even turn one sometimes. Of course, I've seen turn one Jace with the help of a Black Lotus, but Dak Faden, you're able to get on the table sometimes without the help of a Black Lotus. So that's very relevant. Um, but also, more importantly, he's just Filtration. He's able to take their artifacts. Uh, I have seen Dak Emblems in Vintage. Uh, his ultimate is much, much, much faster than a Jace ultimate, uh, even though he's only plusing one. Um, and that's pretty interesting. The ability to exile permanents when you target them. Obviously, all of the blasts are available in Vintage. But let's keep going. I could talk about Dak and Jace all day. 
very powerful walkers. I love playing vintage, you guys know that. And of course, legacy. Let's talk lands. Caracas is back. It's back. So Caracas, if you guys don't recall, uh, only uh, in paper for the longest time had like one printing and then they finally reprinted it and it's still really expensive. I have a buddy who's trying to play lands. And the card's very powerful and popular. There's a lot of cool flavors, for example, of Miracles that use Caracas. A lot of the Death and Taxes decks in Legacy all use Caracas for its synergy with uh, Thalia, of course, and many other um, legendary creatures. So, you know, you, you look at these cards, right? And you're like, okay, 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 Bruce Bye, I got you. Caracas. Sure, it's powerful. It is. It is. Um, okay, well, it's legendary. How many do you want to run? Well, some lists run nearly the full set. De most, death, most, bleh, most death and taxes lists really do run two, three, maybe the play set. Depends on how protected they want to keep their value. Yeah. Anyway, Maze of Ith, of course, very powerful, influential card. Uh, untap an attacking creature, prevent all damage. You're going to see this in lands. You're going to see this in the um, grindy Knight of the Reliquary four color loam lists. Very powerful card. It's essentially recurring, not removal, but protection and combat tricks that you can keep using over and over again. I really like that this card was printed at rare. Same with Wasteland, that was printed at rare. I understand that Caracas might be a choice for a mythic rare, um, and that kind of sucks, but I understand it. And I think it's good that, that Wasteland wasn't changed rarity, that Wasteland wasn't switched over to a mythic rare. It is indeed something that we can get our hands on. Um, you know, and I like that they kept the flavor text on this one. Uh, that's good. And, um, you know, Wasteland is, a, is, is an important piece of the legacy and, and vintage format. You know, it, it gives away, unlike other formats, I'm not going to name names, to really a punish a greedy mana base. It keeps the mana bases in check for some, to an extent and keeps players from running way too many maybe special lands. Obviously, Maze of Ith and Caracas, some of the more powerful lands. There are plenty of very powerful lands in Legacy. One of my favorites, Riptide Lab Laboratory. That's for Wizards. Um, very powerful, but Wasteland keeps that in check. And it's important. Mistress Factory is getting a reprint. This is uh, one of the newer arts. We recognize this one. Uh, they didn't shove any flavor text on this one, but they didn't need to. I don't think it's. I think it's good that they didn't. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of abilities that Factory has. Uh, the ability to animate, the ability to pump other assembly worker creatures. Uh, great card, and I'm glad to see it back. Okay, so artifacts. Now we're going to talk about Baleful Strix and Agent Shardless Agent later. Uh, but I wanted to touch on them, and I wanted to include them in the artifacts section. Um, but um, the big ones that we need to pay attention to here, Mana Crypt. Huge that they got a reprint. Chromox, not so much. Chromox did get like a pro promotional. I actually own really pretty Chromox in myself. Um, and, you know, um, that's great. Chromox is very exclusive to the decks that it's played in. Pretty much you're looking at combo decks. Decks that can handle the card disadvantage that really just want the flexibility that Chromox... Here we go. They want the flexibility that Chromox offers. This was the, to my knowledge, the most recently printed Chromox, and this was the uh, the DCI Judge Reward Chromox, I do believe. But anyways, very pretty Chromox. Uh, I like the new art more though, so maybe I'll try my best to swap out my Tin Fins Chromox, and I think I have two. Um, yeah, I do. For uh, for some of these new arts, that's something I want to touch on. There is a lot of new art. Can you see? Do you remember this art for Char Belcher? No, that's new. Do you remember this art for Mox? No, that's new. The Sensei's top. This art over here, a little bit cut off, I admit. But uh, and 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 something that you'll want to know is yes, this is uh, rare. Sensei's top is rare, uh, and that's good that they didn't make it mythic rare. Uh, some people will like this new art. Some people will not. There's no flavor text. I think they could have shoved some on there. I kind of like flavor text, um, but that's just me. Uh, anyways, you know, we got some other, you know, engines. Ashnod's altar was strong. I wonder if they're going to try to do an interesting archetype with this in the format. Something else to talk about in brevity is that I think that they are trying to make Eternal Masters an interesting draft format, and that's cool. I know they tried to do that with, like, Conspiracy, and that kind of didn't work out, but that's okay. It was still kind of fun. Kind of fun to build a Conspiracy Cube, actually, because there's some draft mechanics that only exist within Cube. Or within a cube that is conspiracy. 
Um, but yeah, it's nice to see a reprint of Mox, although it's a Mythic Rare, that's not going to make too much an impact. We, I figured Mana Crypt, one of the Power Nine, would be Mythic Rare. Uh, does that suck? Yes. Um, they went with the uh, the Magic Online art, actually, in this case. Um, yeah. Disc, probably won't see too much of that. I'm sure Char Belcher, fan, Char Belcher fans are rejoicing that uh, this got a new art. Um, obviously, the text on Char Belcher is huge. Makes sense there's no flavor. But, uh, yeah, for the most part, uh, I'm pretty excited about the new arts and the fact that we're seeing some reprints. Uh, and, yeah, there's a little bit of both on this page. New art for Top, new art for Chrome Mox, reprint of Mana Crypt, that's a big deal, and uh, new art for Char Belcher and a reprint. But mostly the uh, the new art is what's interesting. Okay, let's get into the enchantments. So we talked a little bit about World Gorgeous Dragon earlier, but my head is an Animate Dead. Animate Dead, of course, is one of the ways to enable that infinite loop, but it's good just to see it. Uh, it is a mainstay, usually a one, maybe sometimes two of, in Reanimator. They run fewer and fewer copies now that Abrupt Decay's big and part of the format. But it's nice to see some reprints here. You've got, obviously, I don't think Control Magic or Animate Dead are going to make huge splashes, and Animate Dead's actually an uncommon, by the way. But um, the control magic is interesting. Used to be a huge, powerful mainstay. Um, and I love the flavor on this. If you don't have the best toys, find the one who does. Love that reprint. Uh, is it going to be making a big splash outside of this format itself? Probably not, but that's okay. Uh, guys, that's really okay. New sneak attack art. That's a big deal. People still play sneak attack to a pretty sizable extent. Uh, in Legacy, you see a lot of sneak attack decks also running show and tell. Are we going to see a show and tell reprint? I don't know. Necropotence, of course, huge deal in Vintage. This is a mainstay in many of the Doomsday and Storm decks. It's nice that we're getting a reprint. This is akin to, I do believe, this may already have had this particular art printing in paper, but I do know this, I do recognize this for Magic Online. Sylvan Library, it's nice to see it back. Um, plenty of decks in Legacy love some or multiple copies of Library. Very powerful card. Some of the most strong card draw that you can have in Legacy, obviously, at the cost of life. In green, fantastic. Fantastic card. Good to see, good to see it back. Glad to see it back. Okay, to my left, I've got all the sorceries that have been spoiled so far. Let's break it down real quick. Not that excited about Call of the Skybreaker. You guys probably don't even remember this one. That's okay. Might be fun in the limited format. But the things that I'm interested in, there's a new art for Vindicate. It's also got some new text. So let's talk about it. I have seen entire civilizations rise and fall. You mortals are dust, are but dust to me. That's from Soren Markov, of course. He's a vampire, he's a little bit emotional, he's lived a really long time. Flavor text makes sense. And so you've got this Vindicate, right? Vindicate's cool. And, uh, you know, like, we see new art for Void, that's a favorite of mine. Choose a number, destroy all artifacts and creatures with CMC equal to the number. Then target player reveals as their hand, discards all non-land cards with CMC equal to the number. Very powerful card, very underplayed card. Unless you have some acceleration, you're never going to get that out in a format like Legacy. Uh, it hardly sees any play, if any. I've tried to jam it a few times just because I think it's a cool card. I think it's a great EDH card. I think it's going to be fun for this format. Very interesting sweeper. It's Speaking of sweepers, Toxic Deluge is back. One of the ways to handle s pretty much all the creatures in the format. I've even had really weird games where somebody show and tell did an Emrakul, and then the next turn I just went um, Toxic Deluge, Deluge for 15. So it's a very powerful sweeper. It's a very subtle sweeper, but Toxic is probably one of the strongest sweepers in Legacy because a lot of the decks don't really aggressively attack your life points well unless they're burned. But we'll get to that. Uh, Chain Lightning got a reprint. Fantastic. Gamble's back with new art. Lance players rejoice. This new art's really cool. And the flavor text is great. It says, well, what's the worst that could happen? Well, there's a chance anytime you gamble, the card that you're tutoring for will go to the graveyard. Now, here's the thing. Does that really matter for a Lance deck? No, not really. Uh, they're probably just tutoring for their life from the loam. Uh, Wrath of God reprint, cool. Uh, modern players rejoice. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, other obscure cards. Balance is great. We figured this would be it, Mythic Rarity. Balance, uh, of course, uh, restricted. But you can play it in Vintage. Very, very powerful. If you guys remember, Restore Balance for Modern ba Balance is the original. Uh, it's actually what Restore Balance references. For all my modern players, that's what this card came from. Balance, very powerful two-mana spell. Probably one of the strongest white spells ever printed. Uh, if used correctly. We're getting a Cabal Therapy reprint. That's great. Card's very popular right now. We're getting a Hymn to Turok reprint. That's not necessarily that important, but it's nice. And um, 
New, uh, this might be new flavor text, actually. The priests plead for your anguish and pray for your despair. I'll have to look into that, see if it is. Diminishing returns gets used in... God, I'm talking about every card on this page, aren't I? Well, couldn't help myself except for Guy's Blessing. Well, this enables the infinite uh, get rob combo in modern, but anyway, you can just run Ember Cool. Yeah, Diminishing Returns, um, interesting, interesting. Um, this gets used in Belcher, usually sometimes in the sideboard. This just lets you restock. Very important. Okay, so the moment you guys have been waiting for, the instance. Yes, Vampiric Tutor is back. New art, new text. The power is achieved through blood and sweat. But most be blood. I like that text. Um, the new Force of Will art, I'm not a huge fan of, but I like the text on it. I like that they put flavor on Force of Will. I alone determine my destiny. Which is true. Now, they printed Force at Mythic Rare. Did I like that decision? No, I really didn't. Um, the whole like thing, the spiel I said earlier, like, oh yeah, they're going to try to get more people into Legacy, but one of the most important cards is... Uh, Mythic. And so we're back to the whole thing with the Tarmogoyf in Modern Masters, aren't we? Tarmogoyf, of course, very powerful mainstay of Modern, was printed at Mythic. Why did they decide to print one of the cards that a lot of players are going to be seeking most as Mythic? I don't understand it. That that frustrated me a little bit when I saw that and I was putting this together. I knew we were going to spend a lot of time on this slide. And you know what, guys? I think it's okay. Because you know what? Despite what a lot of players might think about Legacy and Vintage for that matter, well, Vintage is a little bit more skewed, there really is other viable decks, and we're going to get to them in just a second, that exist in Legacy that do not have to be Force of Will decks. In fact, I myself, my main deck, is not a Force of Will deck. And never will be. It doesn't need to be. The way that it wins the Counter Wars is it doesn't. It strips them of their counter magic. Black is a very fantastic color to be playing in Legacy. It's very powerful. Um, I play Tin Pins. I used to play Reanimator. Reanimator is a Force of Will deck, and I had to borrow my Forces at the time. Uh, do I own Forces in paper? Yes, and I occasionally do play Force decks. They're fun. It's hard to make the right decision with your Force of Wills. But you know what, guys? There are other awesome options. Burn is great in Legacy. Elves is great. Tinfins is great. Charbelcher is not a Force of Will deck. Oops all spells. Dredge. Um, the list goes on. Big Red Strategies, the new Eldrazi deck that kind of, in a way, replaced the Mud deck. I could go on. There really are a lot of options. Death and Taxes is probably perhaps one of the strongest non-force decks. There really are a lot more decks than you might think. And that, guys, is something I want to share with you. I think that's a misconstrued perception about the Eternal Formats, Vintage and Legacy. That every single deck has to have force. That's not true. And it's okay then. It's okay that it's a mythic. Because you know what? You're going to probably go home tonight after you listen to this, or if you're already home. You're going to look at all those decks I just talked about. They're awesome decks. Some of them combo, some of them fair. Uh, some of them even a little bit controlling. I would say that the uh, the prison, the big red strategies that you can play in the format, like the Mog Catcher deck, doesn't need force. Wins plenty of games just like any other control deck could, or prison deck can. Stacks. Pox. A buddy of mine plays mono black Pox to great effect. Doesn't run any force. Anyways, let's get back to this. So awesome that we're seeing the tutors. Vampiric. Mystical. Enlightened. My, uh, my uh, Esper deck is built around this card. Enlightened Tutor. One of the strongest, but perhaps... Uh, and I'm excited that it's getting new art. Organization is often undervalued, but rarely unjustified. Just because this card doesn't actually put the card, neither of, none of these do, put the card into your hand, they all search for it, and put it on top of your library. Still very strong. Very strong effect. Being able to find a humility, or an ensnaring bridge? Maybe you need a sensei's top, maybe you need a rest in peace. Some of Legacy's most powerful cards are indeed artifacts and enchantments. If you look into Vintage, 
tutors, mystical and vampiric, can set up that combo turn that you're seeking. Maybe you're piecing together a doomsday kill. But you just need that one card. Go grab it! Spend the two life on the vampiric. Or maybe you need uh, an ancestral, mystical tutor. Go find it. Cast it. Win the game. Fantastic cards that we're seeing. New art for. I'm really excited about the new Entomb art. I have the old Entombs, but you know what? I'd love to get out of these foils. I have the foils from the Graveborn because it was like slightly cheaper. Um, I'd love to get into... This is the old Entomb that I have. I'd love to get into these new Entombs. And I like the flavor on this. I'll return once you've ripened. Kind of gross, right? This is the Entomb that I have. Very, very shiny. Very, very foily. I'd love to get a non-foil of Entomb. And it's only at rare. A day's reprint is awesome, not only for Magic and Paper, but also Magic Online. There's a lot of players that would probably play Days and Pauper, but cannot do so. So we're going to get into Pauper a little bit. I know I've talked mostly about Legacy, and I've talked about Vintage so far, but, but hang on. Modern is, to a lesser extent, a couple of these will be uh, reprints for Modern. A couple of these are going to be reprints and allow some players who wouldn't be playing Pauper to play Popper. So let's get into it. Oh, and yeah, new art for Counterspell. That's sweet. Um, okay, so I broke the creatures into two slides. We'll talk about both. So, what's interesting about this page? Well, we're seeing a Deathrite Shaman reprint. Deathrite Shaman, very powerful. I've even seen him in Show Up in Vintage. He's so strong. Uh, not that excited about Rorks, but we are excited. One of my buddies was excited about the Dualcaster Mage. Uh, but we've got Shardless. This is important. Even though it's at a rare, Shardless needed a reprint. Very expensive card was only in a couple, uh, actually, maybe even just one set if I'm mistaken, in paper. Uh, it's good that we're seeing it back. People can get into Shardless for Legacy. Fantastic archetype, very grindy, very powerful deck. It's kind of the Jund of the format. Maelstrom Wanderer, new art. EDH players rejoice. Plenty of people love this as a finisher or just value engine in Commander. Um, Icarid. Dredge players, get dredging. This card's back for a repent and back for another round. Dredge, of course, very popular in Legacy and Vintage, but more so Vintage for whatever reason. Very powerful archetype. Maybe got a little bit weaker, weaker with the Containment Priest, but fantastic card. Regal Force, Elves decks don't really use this anymore as a finisher, but might be fun for our EDH players. Baleful Strix, really needed, just like Shardless needed a reprint. I'm glad. I'm glad they still got the flavor on this one. Giant Tortoise, okay. Excited about the new Bloodbraid Elf art. That's cool. Uh, Legacy Jund, rejoice. You have new sweet art. Very, like, ah! awesome art. Next slide. Okay, this slide has something that we really need to discuss for Popper players. But other than that, yeah, we talked about World Gorger. It's nice that Shaman's getting reprint. New art for Wirewood Symbiote. Now, plenty of people will like the old art, but I actually kind of like this one. And it has new text. Let the wild in, and channel its strength. And that's cool. New flavor, new art, I'm down. We Dragonauts don't know what it's really doing here, but maybe this has purpose, and maybe this makes sense with the rest of what they're doing for the draft format. I don't know. Maybe we'll do this series again if you guys love this content. Let me know in the Patreon comments. Uh, let me know on Twitch. Be like, Bruce Pie. So glad you're finally doing YouTube or Patreon video content. Why haven't you been doing this for years? I would have watched you. I would have subscribed. Tell me that stuff. Seriously, if this is good or things that I can improve on. Uh, Timberwatch Elf. This is a mainstay of the Popper Elves deck. Mostly seen on Magic Online, but I'm sure some of you guys play Popper and Paper. Cool thing about this card. New art. Um, and listen to this new text. If you ever want to leave this forest, now is the time. Very cool, right? Um, and that's great. Uh, so new Timberwatch elf art, new symbiote elf art. Excuse me, insect art, but it's used in elves. Um, and uh, that's its mainstay. New art for Werebear. I kind of like Werebear. Some people jokingly call it the Tarmogoyf of the Popper format. And you know what? Maybe now that's true. There's a little bit of a green reprint to my left, as you can see. What do you guys think about that? Nimble Mongoose is now in the popper format officially. Printed at common, you can now play the 1-1 Shroud that does Threshold into a 3-3 beater 
in the popper format. This also uh, got a uh, new flavor. One thread connected to all the Traveler's stories. The ferocity of the Mongoose. This just replayed a Canadian Threshold. We may see a Canadian Threshold. I also like the new flavor on Werebear. To become is to understand. Human Bear Druid. Man Bear Pig, you know? So, uh, is there going to be a green Threshold deck in Popper? I think so. That's really great. You know, no offense to Flipping Delvers, you can do it in Popper, but I'd be interested in just trying to Threshold some Mongooses and some Werebears. So, we'll probably brew this for Popper sometime, maybe next week. Uh, even though before the cards come out. Uh, they're not coming out till what was it, the 17th? Yes. 10th for paper, 17th for pauper, uh, uh, for, for Magic Online. Anyways, really, really awesome. I'm going to do two quick announcements. Thank you guys for staying for the spoiler portion of Eternal Masters. Uh, I really appreciate you. It was a blast to do so. I'm really excited about Eternal Masters. I think that we're going to see some new stuff for pauper, for vintage, for legacy. These formats that need some rebirth, that need that revitalization, you know, to come alive and i'd love to see more players than have been able to play these formats due to the price tags be able to play it but uh anywho let's talk news so a uh, card hoarder does Every week, a podcast. I had my first chance to guest star on the podcast, as you can see at the top, Season 1, Episode 7, Interview with Bruce By, the Magic Guy. If you guys want to know a little bit more about me, I actually talk about my previous show, and I talk about some other things. It's not that long of a podcast, and listen to it. Or listen to their other stuff. Their other stuff's great. Connor O'Donnell, of course, worked for, worked for Star City Games for years, worked with Cedric and Patrick, for real. He was the producer. Uh, he's working with Card Hoarder now, so we're in luck. Hopefully, uh, everything that we're doing now on the production side is going to be great. Uh, these guys are awesome. You've also got Dave Dave, uh, Dave C. on there, David Murphy. He's the Irishman grinder on the Card Hoarder team. He's great. If you guys like Dave, seriously, check out this podcast. Also, you guys get to hear the brilliant mind that is the owner of Card Hoarder, Nathaniel Buckley. He's been in the magic business for a long time. One of the most original, uh, one of the original Card Hoarder, excuse me, Magic Online stores, Card Hoarder is. And the thing about Card Hoarder is seriously, he knows his stuff. If you're thinking about getting into Magic Online, I highly recommend you go to cardhoarder.com and you look at the bottom left corner. There's like a tutorial for like people who are just starting Magic Online. I can't make this up. I learned things from it and I've been playing Magic Online for years now. Years. I've been playing for at least four years, five years. And you know what? There's a lot of great stuff on there I didn't even know about. Places where you can snag some free cards, even on commons. And uh, just like tips for when you get started, maybe you should look into Popper, maybe you should look into starting with Standard, maybe you shouldn't jump right into Modern because it's expensive, maybe you should just draft. All that stuff, he really tells you about there. Nathaniel's very knowledgeable and you can listen to him every week. But it was kind of cool that I got to finally get started on this thing. Anyways, tonight uh, is the stream event Popper Challenge. And I just wanted to touch on this, it's been awesome working with Chris Van Meter, it's been awesome awesome getting paid to do magic commentary uh this was kind of a dream job for me obviously i'm studying mechanical engineering but you know what this is in a way a really truly dream job for me and you guys make it possible and card hoarders made it possible they made some of my dreams come true um so uh other things to note check out the debrief on gp charlotte yes we did day two if you want to hear everything about that and all the wonderful things i did from uh Let's see, let me spoil a couple cards. You can be like, whoa, I gotta watch that. Uh, yeah, I used this card. No, I'm not gonna name drop it, but if you recognize that picture, <laughs> I used it on a card. Anyway, um, check that out and uh, let me know what you thought of this. If you want me to get, if you guys want me to do more content like this, uh, this really wasn't that bad. Just a quick studio session and I'm happy to do it. Um, but 30 minutes from now, the tournament starts, so I gotta get ready. See you on the next Bruce Spy the Magic Guy, and remember, may the science be with you.